now, Decoder Ring Theater presents the continuing adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, that scourge of the underworld, hunter of those who prey upon the innocent, that marvelous masked mystery man known only as the Red Panda! The Red Panda, mysterious crusader for justice, hides his true identity as one of the city's wealthiest men in his never-ending battle against crime and corruption. Only his trusty driver, Kit Baxter, who joins him in his quest in the guise of the Flying Squirrel, knows who wears the mask of the Red Panda. This episode, The Rat Lord. There's no use hiding in the shadows, you know. The shadows are my home. The darkness is my domain. Step forward, loyal subject. Don't be shy. (laughs) There we are. Identify yourself. It's... It's Tommy Mitchell, sir. Wrong! I'm sorry. Wrong, wrong, wrong! Tommy Mitchell is a human name, and you are not human, are you? No, sir. What was that? No, my lord. You were once a human boy, but no longer. You walk amongst them still, dwell still in the world of Tommy Mitchell, but... You do so only at my suffrage, do you not? Yes, yes, my lord. There we are. Do not tremble. (laughs) It is easy to forget your place. Perhaps I have been too forgiving. I allow you to remain in your old life for 29 days. I ask only one day of service a month. One single day. Perhaps I have been too generous? (laughs) Do you think so? No, my lord. I'm sorry, my lord. Then step forward and identify yourself properly. I'm rat number 115. (sighs) Rat number 115. A proper name. Let me find you in my ledger. You are late, 115. I'm sorry, my lord. You were to have reported an hour ago, 115. Yes, my lord. Step forward and present your tribute. Here. This is all I could... What is this? It's all I could get. It's all I could find. Please. Your tribute was to have been $100, 115. Yes, my lord, but... This is seventy-seven fifty. Do you think your tribute is a joke? A matter for negotiation? A helpful suggestion? Well, do you? No, my lord. I have here in my ledger that you live in a good neighborhood, 115. Tommy Mitchell has a nice family, a good home. Yes, my lord. I allow you to keep all these things in exchange for one day of service a month and the small sum of $100 which you steal on my behalf. Perhaps, once again, I have been too kind. Please! You recall the Johnstons down the street from you, do you not? Yes, my lord. Mr. Johnston simply left one day, did he not? His children were left without a father, were they not? Yes, my lord. And the Davis family that used to live next door. Mr. Davis lost his job. The family lost their home. They had to send the children away, didn't they? Didn't they? Yes, my lord. And all because these children displeased me. Failed me. You know that. Don't you, rat number 115? Yes, my lord. Look at me. You are the only one who can save Tommy Mitchell's family now, 115. You have sold yourself to me to do so. You pay tribute to protect them. If you are weak, they will suffer. You know all this, do you not? Yes, my lord. If I have a fault, it is that I am too merciful. I shouldn't do this, but I will allow you to make up your shortfall in your next tribute without further penalty. Oh, thank you, my lord. Thank you. But if you should fail me again, one, one, five, your entire family will pay the penalty. Two, the Rat Lord! <laughs> Boss? Boss? Where'd you go? Over here, Kit. Just getting the chairs set up. I don't know why they make these... Folding chairs so complicated. Need a degree in mathematical engineering just... Aha! Now, where is that umbrella? 
This is quite the little campsite you're constructing. Mm. I don't know how you managed to corral this much prime beach space at Sunnyside. What's that? Well, on a hot summer day like this, the beach at Sunnyside is a spot where half the city wants to be. Normally, we'd be lucky to get a blanket down, much less chairs and an umbrella. How did you do I bribed that? them. What? I bribed them. Didn't I? <laughs> you bribed half the beach? Well, I bribed the nearest ones. I just bought ice cream for the rest. How often do we get to the beach? Um, counting today? Uh, once. Well, then, may as well do it in style. There. An idyllic little nook to sit and read a book. You aren't under the impression that you're reading all day, are you? Why not? Boss, you promised to take me to the beach. We're at the beach. Boss, I want to go swimming. It's hot. It's sunny. The water's perfect. Besides, why else do you think I put on my new swimming suit? Your new sw... Oh, my. Did you really just notice that now? Well, I was... <clears throat> I was a little distracted with the chairs and such. Do you like it? It's very nice. You're not even looking. I saw it just now. You looked at it for a half a second. I I think I've got the nuances. You don't like it. I do like it. But you're not even looking at it. Kit, I don't think... It's brand new. It's really very nice. I bought it just for this... Kit, I didn't mean to... Forget it. Kit, I just thought... What? I just thought it might be a little awkward if you caught me ogling you in your bathing costume. Oh. Oh. So maybe we could just... Ogling. I kind of like the sound of that. Stop clowning around. I mean, if the only thing you're worried about is getting caught, I could look the other way. Kit, please. I'll just look over there, where that ice cream man is counting up a fistful of money. Where anyone sitting directly to my left could ogle with impunity if they were so inclined. Kit, I don't think... So. Uh, na, 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 just uh, looking over there. Mind my own business. la di da di dum Oh, I wonder what the boss is doing right now. Where could it be? la di dee What the... What the... What the heck? Did... Did I just see what I think I... Hey, boss! Hmm? I can't be sure, but I think I just saw some kid lift a guy's wallet. Boss? Hmm? God, I wish I could just... Boss! He did it again! He got into a lady's purse! What did you... Uh-oh. He spotted me. Hey! Hey, kid! Come back here! Hey! No, oh, no, you don't, you little... Oh, 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 idea, Hi! Where did he... Sorry, mister. Did you see a kid run through here? Anybody? About ten sandy hair? Kit! Kit! Sorry, boss. He got away. Who got... What? The kid. I thought I had him, but there's so many people around. What kid? The one that... What do you mean, what kid? I told you. Oh. You weren't a little distracted, were you? Uh, Look, I don't... Yes? Why don't we just have a swim and you can tell me all about it? Come on. Distracted, you say? That's my boss. I must say, I'm surprised at both of you. Matron, please. After all that you two have done for the children of this orphanage to accuse them of something like this. No one accuse anybody of anything. It's more than just the money you bring us. The Lord knows we need that. So much so that I've never asked where it came from. Matron, if you'd only listen. These children look up to you. Both of you. Life has dealt these children a bad hand. And most days there isn't much hope of things ever getting better. But when they see the red panda and the flying squirrel looking out for them, why, they'd do just about anything for you. It'd crush them if they only knew that you suspected them too. Two? Matron, I get the feeling that we wandered into an argument you were already having. Sit down. I don't have... Sit down. That's better. We have tried to do what we can for this orphanage, for everyone that has no one else in their corner... We did it freely and without expectation of thanks or reward. Now, it's entirely up to you, but I think you might give us the benefit of the doubt. You're right. I'm sorry. I don't mean to get angry. But they're good children. It's not their fault being poor. There aren't many people in this world today that can't be said to be the author of their own misfortune. And these children have had more than most people could bear. Matron, 
Who accused the children? Oh, that Chief O'Malley sent some men down. They took pictures of some of them. To show to witnesses. They were humiliated. And then you came in. It's all right. We didn't know. The flying squirrel saw a young pickpocket plying his trade a few days ago. He eluded us, but we did a little routine follow-up. We learned that there's been something of a rash of petty larceny around the city, perpetrated by a dizzying array of boys and girls, if the eyewitness reports are to be believed. And we know from experience that for every petty crime reported, another twenty such misdeeds never are. And so you automatically suspect We looked for a place to start, Matron, just like Chief O'Malley did. The way things are these days, are you really surprised that there are children who are desperate enough to turn to crime? I wish I could say no, but you're right. But believe me when I tell you that when we see a sudden surge like this, we know that there's an outside force at work. Times are bad, to be sure, but they aren't that much worse than they were two months ago. Something else is driving this rash of crime. Something or someone. I knew the boy I saw wasn't from this orphanage. In fact, he looked too... Oh, I don't know. There was nothing about him that looked poor or starving or desperate. Kids can do bad things for a lot of reasons, matron. But when this many of them are up to no good at the same time, your average masked do-gooders start to wonder why. And what have you learned? That so far our problem-solving hasn't been much more creative than Chief O'Malley's. Which is a bad sign. Mm. Well, I wish I could help. Something must be troubling the children who are committing these crimes. But it's so hard to get them to open up. The children here trust you both. But I'm as sure as I can be that they aren't involved... Half of them want to be mystery men themselves when they grow up. Is that a fact? What is it? What is what? I just saw a bright idea pop into that head of yours. Maybe you did, Squirrel. Maybe you did. No, please, you can't do this. You leave me very little choice, rat number 231. I'll try harder. I'll do better, I will. This is three times in a row your tribute has been short. I'm sorry. Do you imagine I have time to waste on an unworthy subject like yourself? No. No what? No, rat lord. I'm sorry. You think this is a game? There are children lined up and waiting for the protection of the rat lord, 231. Children whose families need my help, my protection. I chose you over all of them. Sought you out because I knew of the calamities that would soon tear your family apart. And knew that only I could prevent them. Only I could save your family. Yes, my lord. I feel somewhat underwhelmed by your gratitude, 231. I'm sorry, my lord. I'm grateful. Really, I am. It's just so hard to steal enough. I get so frightened. Which do you fear more, rat number 231? Do you fear being caught? Perhaps even punished for your miserable little crimes? A slap on the wrist, a stern talking to? Or do you fear the destruction of your family itself? No, please! And if I remove your miserable little clan from my protection, you will be quite lost, 231. Left alone on the streets with no one to look after you, no one to care for you. No! Nothing but the certain knowledge that your own weakness and cowardice brought you to this point. No, please, my lord, I beg you, please, please, give me another chance. I'll be good... I'll get enough, I will. I hope so, number 231. For your sake, there are penalties to be paid when you fail the Rat Lord. <laughs> you are listening to the Red Panda Adventures from Decoder Ring Theater. Your address for adventure, mystery, and comedy. Harry Kelly, will you sit still? I'm trying, Miss Squirrel. Honest, I am. But it ain't easy. Look, it took a long time to convince the boss to teach me the old master of disguise routine. And I don't get to practice very much. So if you don't want to go out on the town looking like a showgirl who's seen better days... I'll be good. And making me look a little dangerous, would you? Maybe give me a big scar or something. You think guys with scars look dangerous? Well, sure. Harry, the dangerous one is the one that gave him those scars. Gosh, I never thought of it that way. Look up. Now hold still. Good. 
You don't see any scars on me, do you? Nope. Just freckles. I got too much sun the other day. Leave my freckles out of this. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Miss Squirrel. Yes, Harry? Are you and the Red Panda married? Harry? Yes? Is it okay if I write dunce on your forehead with bright red lipstick? I was just asking. Well, just don't. We wear masks for a reason, and it's for your protection as well as ours. Okay. I just think he likes you as all. What? Why? What? Did he say something to you? Oh, boy. Will you look at me now? How's it going in here? Boss! Well, pretty good. That is, take a look for yourself. Say, that looks quite good, Squirrel. That's a very good job indeed. Ah, oh, shucks. <laughs> I, I want to see, I want to see. The mirror's behind you, short pants. But, but I look just like a regular kid. Exactly. But a completely different regular kid. The best disguise of all is one that lets you hide in plain sight, Harry. I still don't see why I can't have a mask. If for no other reason, because you'd make us call you Panda Boy and you'd get kidnapped every ten minutes. Harry, this is a very important job. And a big step up in terms of your responsibility as my agent. If the Flying Squirrel and I are right about this rash of youth-committed crimes, then there's a ring or racket behind it all. We need to know what it is, but we know that children often won't tell adults when something's really wrong. They know they won't be listened to or taken seriously, or they're afraid of getting into trouble. The boys and girls of the orphanage have agreed to act as our eyes and ears, to try and ferret out some information, anything that could give us a clue to the identity of the fiend in back of this plot. But I need a trusted agent to quarterback this play, to take the reports of all the children as they come in and bring them to me, and to make sure that none of our young helpers put themselves into danger or unacceptable risk. I know that I can rely on you to do this job. Yes, sir. You sure can, Red Panda. But... But what? Well, can't I at least have a code name? He's, uh, got a point, boss. Mm-hmm. There wouldn't be much good in changing his face if we just called him Harry Kelly. Hmm. Squirrel, hand me that cap, would you? Uh, this black one? Yes. A perfectly ordinary cap, just like any newsie or boy in the street might wear, but pull it down low or on just the right angle. There. Something that only stands out if you're looking for it. And we can tell the young recruits of the Panda Patrol that they report to the Black Cap. The Black Cap? Yes. I like it. Good. And the Sinister Fiend will face justice at the hands of the Black Cap. Go get him, Panda Boy. Uh, excuse me? I was looking for... I mean, are you the Black Cap? What's that? I mean, the doves fly west in the summer. The Black Cap at your service. You you work for the Red Panda, but you look just like an ordinary kid. The best disguise is one that lets you hide in plain sight, kid. Wow. You got something to report? Sure, sure. I was down the square. I saw a kid our age lift a guy's wallet, bold as brass, and hightail it out of there. Where did he go? Straight home, if you can believe it. Nice looking house, too. I don't know why a kid who's got it soft like that would be stealing, giving us poor kids a bad rap. That's just what we're out here to find out. You got the address? Sure, I got it right here. You want I should get back there and keep an eye on the place? Negative. The Red Panda don't want anybody getting spotted. He, that is, we'll set up teams to watch for our friend. You did a good job, cadet. Psst, Black Cap. Since when is psst the cold word? Aw, come on. I can't remember all that stuff. Oh, brother. Kids. Report. What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. I got two more addresses. Followed the first kid right home. Spotted the second one on my way here. Good work, short pants. You've got the record. Gosh, thanks, Mr. Blackcap. Sir. Come on, kid. There's no way out of this. We know your name is Tommy Mitchell. We know where you live, and we know that you've been stealing. Leave me alone. You don't understand. I understand enough. Somebody's been putting you up to this, and my boss wants to know who. You're... Boss? Who are you? I'm working for the Black Cap. Black? I never heard of him. Yeah, that's the idea, see? Now make with the skin. You don't understand. I have to do what he says or something terrible will happen. Something terrible? Yeah, that's right. 
I have to bring him money or he won't protect my family. He says something bad will happen for sure. Oh, he does, does he? Well, if you come talk to the Black Cap, if you tell him what you know, he offers you the protection of the Red Panda. Who's there? Do you brats not realize yet you cannot hide from me? This abandoned sewer tunnel is my domain, the kingdom of the Rat Lord. And you are my loyal subjects. You have nothing at all to fear from me, so long as you do not continue to try my patience. Uh, I'm right here, my lord. Ah, rat number 115, isn't it? Yes. Yes, my lord. Let me check my ledger. Interesting. You are a full two days early, 115. Yes, my lord. You've never been early before. I'm pleased to see you showing initiative, 115. I take it you have been extra resourceful in obtaining the full tribute due to me, your lord and master. What was that? What was what? I'm sure I heard something. Someone else. Come out here. Who is it? It's me, Rat Lord. Why, it's Rat number 231, isn't it? Yes, Rat Lord. You're... You're not due here for another two weeks, 231. Yes, Rat Lord, I know. And you're not... You're not trembling. You seem strangely confident. You've never walked in here with your head held high before, 231. No, sir. What are you two up to? What do you mean? Oh, I suppose you just met up while wandering the sewers and decided to pay a call on your dear old Rat Lord, is that it? You think they're strength in numbers? <laughs> what good are two such as you against the power and majesty of the Rat Lord? Who said there were only two of us? What's this? Where, where did all these children come from? My loyal rats, what's the meaning of this? Who do you think you are? Stop right there. Do you have any idea of the powers you defy? You know that it is only through my mercy that your families have remained untouched by tragedy, by calamity. By this reckless defiance, you have doomed them all. I'm ghost of a socking it. What did you say? Who, who are you, boy? I don't recognize your face. That's the idea. Bet you don't recognize a lot of these faces, do you? They're not your troops. They're mine. And all these others, the ones you've called your rats, now they work for me. Oh, they do, do they? And tell me, little foolish one, why should that terrify the Rat Lord? Because I work for him. <laughs> At last. No, it can't be him. It can't be. But it is, you miserable little scum. You set yourself up as a king, took advantage of the natural fears of children in these dark times, made them become your instruments of crime while you sat here in the darkness like some twisted aberration. You are no king, no lord, but you've got it partly right. You truly are subhuman. But now it is over. Do you think so? You've found a handful of my rats, but you've never find them all. Hundreds of them, each paying a small monthly tribute. Thousands of tiny crimes adding up to one giant payoff. I'll set up somewhere else. It isn't over. You're awfully sure I'm going to let you walk out of here. Why walk when you have a secret exit? Oh, please come down this pipe of rat face. Because when you set foot in here, you're mine all mine. And I want nothing better than to take you apart. No, no, not her. Keep back. I see my reputation precedes me. There is no escape for you, Rat Lord. Your crimes are beneath contempt. Before this is over, I will see you in a cell that makes this sewer look like a palace. Don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. No, you piece of filth. I'm not going to hurt you. What? And neither is she. What? You're not? No. We're not going to lay a finger on you. They are. What? Get no! no! Please stop! No! Sorry to keep you waiting, kid. How are the papers? It's all over the front page, boss. They're calling for the head of this two-bit con man. And with the news traveling so fast, every other kid that was being forced to steal for this rat lord will know that he's free and clear. That's good news. 
Children know more than we give them credit for. Even those whose families have been sheltered from the worst of these hard times can sense the fears of their parents. It's a terrible thing to exploit the fears of the most innocent. <laughs> well, our little band of de facto agents put a stop to that. Our man in the prison hospital says the Rat Lord still wakes up screaming. Says the children are after him. <laughs> I didn't think they were that scary. They played, rather dramatically, on the worst fears of his suppressed conscience. Provided the punishment he knew in his heart he deserved. It might just drive him mad. Poor baby. Mm. How'd your meeting go? In my capacity for the City Father's Benevolent Fund, I have persuaded the mayor and the chief that the hoard of treasure the Rat Lord had amassed would be best put to use in support of the city's orphanages. Well, that seems like a perfect ending. Almost. Let's go. Hey! What's in this box in the front seat? Mm, is, is there something on the front seat? Why can't you give me things like a normal man? Why do you have to leave them in the car and pretend they aren't from you? I don't know what you're talking about. Fine. Let's see. Oh, it's a great big hat. Such as one might wear to keep the sun off. Say, at the beach. Hmm. That's a good idea, you know. If Kit Baxter and the Flying Squirrel get too many matching freckles... Why, that could compromise our secret identities. I uh, yeah, wonder if it works. I guess there's one place we could test it out. If you like. Right now? I'm the idle rich, remember? If I did any more work today, people might start to talk. Then I guess the only way to protect our secret identities is to drive us right back to the beach. Well, if that's what we have to do... I uh, noticed the hat exactly matches my new swimming suit. Somebody must have made quite the close observation, don't you think? Kit Baxter, behave yourself. Yes, boss. And so concludes another adventure of the Red Panda! This recording and the story, characters, and situations contained therein are the exclusive property of their creator and copyright holder, Greg Taylor, and are produced and distributed by Decoder Ring Theater through arrangement with him. These recordings may not be rebroadcast or redistributed by any means for any reason without express permission. Until next time, when Decoder Ring Theater brings you the further thrilling adventures of Canada's greatest superhero, this is Stephen Burley reminding you DecoderRingTheater.com is your address to adventure! The Red Panda Adventures, episode 35, The Rat Lord, was written and directed by Greg Taylor, with original music by Andrea Lyons, and featured the vocal talents of M. John Kennedy, Kevin Robinson, Stephen Burley, Julie Cogger, Shannon Arnold, Ian, Mark, and Heather Gregg, Clarissa Dernetter-Landon, and Greg Taylor. Until next time, for all of us here, good night. <laughs>